Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Will Martin and I'm a family nurse practitioner working in emergency medicine. Now, several of you have asked me from time to time if I could discuss in more detail what goes into achieving a PhD or a DNP. First, for those that don't know, a DNP is a doctor of nursing practice, which is more or less considered to be a practice-focused doctorate. The PhD, which is the doctor of philosophy, is considered to be the highest academic degree that somebody can achieve and it's a research-focused degree. Now, I earned my DNP in 2011 when it was still considered to be purely a practice doctorate uh, that would complement a practitioner, such as a nurse practitioner or a nurse anesthetist. Now, since that time, the DNP has kind of morphed into other areas of nursing, such as leadership and management and so on. Um, the PhD, however, remains the degree most often recognized as a scientific, research-focused degree. Now, I've been very fortunate over the years to have earned both degrees, and it probably makes me sort of an oddball, but I'm happy to give you my perspective on each degree, but this is purely one man's opinion. So first of all, why would someone want to get a doctoral degree in nursing or in the health sciences for that matter? Well, it typically is because that person wants to teach at the graduate level. In most cases, it requires a doctoral degree to teach doctoral students and in many cases, master's degree students also. Now, in other cases, there's nurses who wanna delve into research uh, and doctoral education provides many of the tools that are necessary to conduct independent research. And then there's people like myself who are simply curious about education, enjoy learning, and don't mind spending the time working hard to achieve a goal. Personally, I've never had any strong interest in joining a faculty and teaching full-time. Despite this, I still teach at least one or two days a week. In fact, right now, I'm currently teaching first-year medical students in a longitudinal course entitled Foundations of Reasoning in Medicine. It's a great course, and it's offered uh, to medical students thinking to get them thinking like doctors at a very early point in their medical education. It's given me new insight into medical education as opposed to nursing education, and also, you know, the similarities and differences between the two. Now, I'd have to say that having a PhD probably opened that door for me to get involved in teaching medical students. I also teach my nurse practitioner fellows in emergency medicine, and that certainly falls in line with my DNP training. So if you're thinking about advanced education, such as a doctoral degree, you have to think what it is you might want to be doing five or 10 or 20 years from now. I know that may be hard to do, but that's the first step in determining the direction that your life might take. So you might be asking yourself, do I have what it takes to succeed at the doctoral level? So here's the straight up answer to that question. First, you have to understand that any doctoral education is gonna take a huge amount of your time. If you're trying to work full time and complete a doctoral program in that reasonable amount of time, it's gonna be tough. It's doable, but it's gonna to be tough. There was, without question, a lot of reading and writing in my DNP program, but the PhD program is an order of magnitude greater, it seems. One thing that I'll say is that when you complete a PhD, you'll be a much, much better writer than you were before you started. That is one of the things that I think is universal in all PhD programs, is the demand for quality and meticulous writing skill. You'll write a ton, but you'll also read a ton. And along with this, you'll learn the mechanics of how to conduct research. And also, you'll learn the statistics required to interpret and describe your research. Now, mostly talking about the PhD, but I think in many DNP programs today, the lines are really blurred. And there's a greater focus on research in the DNP programs today than there were 10 years ago. So. Do you have what it takes to succeed in a doctoral program? I think to sum it up, the answer is yes, if you can commit the time, avoid the distractions, and essentially set aside most of your life for two to five years minimum. So the next question is often, how long does it take to complete a DNP or a PhD program? Well, again, this is variable depending upon whether you're going full-time or part-time. But in general, most DMP programs can be completed in two to three years, while PhD programs can take considerably longer. Most DMP programs are in the neighborhood of 30 to 36 credit hours, while 
PhD programs are usually around 60 to 70 credit hours and sometimes more than that. Now, some of those credit hours are part of your dissertation, which is really a separate issue that I think we'll talk about uh, maybe a little bit later on. Now, if you have the opportunity to attend a program that has some regular face-to-face -face interaction, I highly recommend it. Online programs seem to be everywhere today, but doctoral work can be very lonely and very isolating, and it's tremendously helpful if you can go through the process with a cohort of students who are experiencing the same trials and tribulations that you are. In my case, both my DNP and PhD programs were what we called immersion type programs. And you would typically attend classes on campus, usually for four day stretches in a row, twice a semester. So this allowed the cohort to meet together uh, for those four days. Most of us traveled from a distance and so we stayed at a hotel and usually we all stayed at the same hotel which meant that we could go out to dinner in the evening or enjoy breakfast in the morning, and it really made the experience that much better. A purely online program is extremely isolating, and doing this type of work completely alone can't do much good for your mental health. So my recommendation is, if possible, find a program where you can regularly meet with your cohort of students to share experiences and bond. If that's not possible, and if you're attending an online program, set up a Facebook group or some other social media opportunity where you can all chat and share in real time, which is still more helpful than being completely on your own. So what kind of coursework will you study? Well, again, that varies uh, depending upon the program, but in general, most doctoral programs will have a fair amount of writing and presenting to the class. Be prepared that you will oftentimes have to present material in front of a group. So if you have public speaking anxiety, that is another hurdle that you might have to overcome. Also, I'll say this based upon my own experience. I've been playing with computers since the early 90s, yet I still had to learn a ton of things when it came to formatting and layouts and using programs on the computer. I learned that my Mac could do so many things that I just wasn't aware of, until I got my doctoral program going. So I guess that's a side benefit that you'll learn more about how to use a computer than you ever thought you needed to. So this is probably touchy, but I'll ask it anyway, because I'm sure you're asking it, is the coursework boring? Well, I guess that depends upon your viewpoint. I'll admit, I found a fair amount of it to be a little boring, tedious, often felt like I was just doing busy work, but I knew that this was part of the pathway to achieving the goal, and it wasn't going to hinder me in any way. I tried to find good, applicable things that I could use in my practice, but sometimes, to be honest, it's just kind of hard to do. It is what it is. I mean, you know, not every course is going to be very exciting or very enlightening. You just have to get through it, which is part of the process. Other things that, you know, I think we get hung up on uh, throughout teaching and learning is, you know, are you going to get along with the faculty? So it's an interesting question because, you know, if you're, if you've gone to school for anything, you know that no matter what level of education you've been through, you've always found some faculty to be better than others and more gifted than others. And so it's no different in a doctoral program. Um, I mean, to be sure, all of the faculty teaching will have doctoral degrees and yet as you can imagine, some are more gifted teachers than others. This is just another example of where perseverance plays a big role in surviving a doctoral program. Don't get wrapped up in personalities of the faculty. Just simply do your work, get it done on time, and do it to the best of your ability. Now, another question that I've had is, what about these qualifying exams or competency exams that, that you might hear about? Well, most doctoral programs have... Um, qualifying competency exams that are given at some point, usually halfway through the program. Um, and these qualifying exams are kind of the mountain that you have to overcome in order to proceed further. So it's kind of like a weeding out process, I suppose. But the qualifying exams, uh, they can be written, they can be oral or a combination of the two. And the exams are typically comprised of the material learned in all of your courses up to that point. It's a stressful time because that's a point of failure, and if you don't get past it, you're done. 
The good news is most people get past it because if you're struggling at that point, usually the faculty have recognized that you're struggling and they'll reach out to try to help you uh, before you actually take your, your comps or your qualifying exams. So what about the dissertation? So I've been thinking about this and I think the dissertation deserves its own video. Um, so whether it's the capstone project in your DNP or the dissertation in your PhD, these are the culminating projects that you work on at the end of the program. Because the PhD dissertation is so feared by many, it's certainly worth its own video to break it down a bit. So if you're interested in that, watch for my video discussing the dissertation. Again, the good news is if you're struggling and not ready to proceed with your dissertation phase, the faculty probably have already identified that and they'll work to remediate you as needed or suggest you leave the program doesn't happen very often, but it can. Most people don't fail at the dissertation stage because they're not allowed to get to that stage unless the faculty are really confident that you're going to succeed. Now, I know I've covered a lot and probably rambled a bit too, but I brought up some points that maybe will lead to some questions that you may have. And if you have questions, I invite you to leave them in the comments section. I'll read them and I'll try to respond to all of them. I hope that Nothing I've said has discouraged you, but at the same time, I think it's important that you hear from people, not just me, but others who have completed doctoral work in order to decide ahead of time whether it's something you, know, you may really be interested in. So until next time, I invite you to be kind to yourself and be kind to others, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.